The UN says Gaza is facing a humanitarian catastrophe. Anger across the region about the impact on Palestinian civilians. The whole region is at the brink of falling into the abyss. Israel's bombing campaign has been the fiercest in recent memory. Israel says it's targeting Hamas fighters, but airstrikes have also hit residential buildings, schools, and clinics. Israel cut off food, fuel, water, and electricity supplies into Gaza, and supplies of everything are running out. The UN also says people are drinking salty water from agricultural wells and they're concerned about the spread of disease. More than half of Gaza's population have had to leave their homes. There's also been a huge movement of people from the north of Gaza to the south, while Israeli airstrikes have continued everywhere. Israel told civilians living in the north, more than a million people, they had 24 hours to evacuate ahead of a possible ground invasion, something the UN said was impossible without devastating humanitarian consequences. Bombardments did not stop in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip, that's at Khan Yunus and Rafah. And that's why so many families who have evacuated south are going back now because at least, at least, um, if we're going to die, we're going to die with dignity in our homes. Egypt is the only country other than Israel that shares a border with Gaza. So there's a big focus on opening up that crossing, the Rafah crossing, as an aid route. The backdrop is that Egypt and Israel generally have a pretty cooperative relationship. They signed a peace deal in 1979, and Egypt has often been a mediator in previous conflicts between Israel and Hamas. Even in so-called normal times, Israel maintains a siege on Gaza controlling who and what goes in and out. And that includes coordinating with Egypt about the movement of people and goods through the Rafah crossing. They're complicit with Israel in the siege uh, of uh, Gaza, which has been going on. And this is very hard for Palestinians and other Arabs to accept, but it's a, it's a reality. After U.S. President Joe Biden's trip to Israel, Israel now says it will not prevent humanitarian assistance from Egypt as long as it is only food, water, and medicine for the civilian population in the south, and as long as no supplies reach Hamas. There are trucks lined up at the border ready to go. Egypt's now agreed that 20 can go in, but it's not confirmed when. Usually, dual nationals would be able to get in and out of Gaza pretty easily using the Rafah crossing, but not now. I'm a U.S. citizen. My country told me to come here. We went through hell coming through here. We don't know what's going on, why we were told to come, and when are we going to get out of here? It's hopeless. My message is to Secretary Blinken. If we were Israelis, would this happen to us? It also says it won't take in Palestinian refugees as a matter of principle. It says it stands by the goal of a two-state solution, meaning a Palestinian state alongside the state of Israel, and that taking in large numbers of refugees would undermine that. Jordan's taking a similar position. Many Palestinians are worried about this too. That is a red line, uh, because I think that is the plan by certain of the usual suspects to try and create de facto issues on the ground. No refugees in Jordan, no refugees in Egypt. If Egypt were to open its border and a million Palestinians would leave Gaza and go to Sinai, in theory, just for temporary protection, the fear is they never go back. They don't want to suffer another Nakba, uh, where uh, half the Palestinian population in 1947-48 was driven out of Palestine or fled because there was war. And this is something that people are very aware of now on the on the Egyptian front. We are prepared to fight, uh, if needs be, on two fronts. Uh, we have the ability to do so. We can do it on more fronts as well. Remember, there's a lot of diplomacy going on behind the scenes between Israel, the U.S., and Arab leaders. The Israelis are walking into a trap, and they know it. The Israelis are very good in their air force. They can destroy. We've seen what they have done in Gaza. They can level the city, but they cannot guarantee a success of the infantry. They could kill many or all of the Hamas leaders, but that wouldn't do anything other than spark an even more 
um, determined and, and more militant movement that would follow some years down the road. Hamas is uh, an idea. Uh, it's a, a visceral, political, national, human response to uh, decades of occupation and subjugation. The truth is that the more they attempt to control Gaza and isolate Gaza and contain Gaza, the less secure Israel becomes, not the more secure. The story of Gaza, the struggle of the Palestinians, does not begin and end with Hamas. When you say victory, what do you mean? What's going to be of Gaza? What can we do to leverage this unsinkable round of bloodshed into a positive path forward? There should be choreography to address the core issues of this conflict. Security is one of them, but occupation. If you don't deal with occupation, you're doing nothing. And I'm saying that as an Israeli.